Hello everyone, it's the new year, time to make new promises and set goals. As teachers, it's also a valuable lesson we can teach to our students. So I've assembled 10 activities you can do with your class to bring in the new year. Before we start, if you would like more videos on teaching, classroom activities or free worksheets, please like and subscribe to this channel. Also remember to click the bell icon and leave a comment. Every bit of engagement helps. That's it. Okay, everyone, let's get into the 10 New Year's resolution activities you can use in your classroom. A good New Year's resolution lesson plan has a few components. It should cover the importance of setting goals, how to set plans and achieve them, and any holiday related vocabulary that students don't understand. Number one, New Year's craft for young learners. Ask students to draw two pictures. One picture of an event or activity that they enjoyed in the past year, and another picture of what they're looking forward to in the coming year. It is so important for students to relate that material to their own lives so that they can share their experience with other students. Number two, create your own class calendar. Teach or review the months of the year if the students are still lower level. Then divide the class into 12 groups, giving each group a month. A fun way to pick is to put all the months into a bowl and ask the groups to pick. This makes it fair to the students. Now, give each group a calendar month template and tell them to fill it with special days, birthdays, and they can also decorate it. Now that you've got your own calendar for the year, you can put it up and students can always look at it. You can even put it up against the wall so that students always have something to look at if that is possible. Because they work in groups, students can also walk around the class and find out when the other students birthdays are. You can look at special events, you can look at activities, you can look at things that they're looking forward to. They can go onto the internet and perhaps look up special events that are happening later that year. This activity is great for any level. You can use it with younger students and you can make it up for more advanced students. Students will really participate and they love doing this. Number three, I found this list on New Year's resolutions on the internet. Take these New Year's resolutions and mix them up. Then place the students into groups and ask each group to put them into order from most popular to least popular. By putting them into groups, they will discuss their thoughts on the topics. After revealing the list, you want to ask your students some questions. Why was this one number one? Why was this one number 10? Why is this popular? Which one do you think applies to your life the most? You can also share your experiences of what you want for the next year. Why do we do this as teachers? Because we have to model what we want them to do. Here is the list for the top 20 New Year's resolutions. Number one, diet, exercise, and weight loss. Two, read or study more. Three, learn something new. Four, save money. Five, be nicer, kinder, and more patient. Six, get a new job. Seven, volunteer and donate more to charity. Eight, drink less alcohol. Nine, relax and get more sleep. 10, make new friends and be a better friend. Number four, New Year's Pictionary. Students write down a couple of resolutions on a piece of paper. Then they take turns to mime them in groups. I like to put students into smaller groups, write down the ideas and then pass them to another group so they don't know which re resolutions there are. Number five, walk around the class and do a survey. Students walk around the class and they ask their friends for their New Year's resolutions. They write down their friend's name, write down their resolution, and they should also practice asking a follow-up question. Because they've already played some of the previous games, they should already have a clear idea of what resolutions they have. Make sure to tell them to pick something that is specific to them. You don't want to see 20 Korean girls all say that they want to lose weight. Number six. And smart goals. 
Many New Year's resolutions don't stick unless we make SMART goals. By learning how to set good goals, students can actually achieve them in the future. And as teacher, it is our responsibility to teach them how to achieve their goals. SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. So ask students to write down their New Year's resolutions and also to set it with SMART goals. For example, my New Year's resolution is to improve my English. What do I need to do? I need to study English for at least 20 minutes a day. I should ask two questions in every English lesson. I want to learn two new vocabulary words every week. You want students to write down SMART goals to achieve their New Year's resolutions. Once they're finished, Students should find a partner and talk about these SMART goals that they've created for their New Year's resolutions. They share their New Year's resolution and also outline their plan for achieving it. Then the partner will report back to the class of what their partner has learned. I love doing this in my own classes where I don't just let students introduce themselves or introduce their plans. I'd rather get a friend to do it for them because sometimes they're shy to talk about themselves. Here's a script you can use as an example. My partner Molly would like to turn over a new leaf in 2020. She wants to get better at the violin. First, she will practice every day. She will also try to be in more competitions. Finally, she will audition for the local youth orchestra. Number seven, not the only New Year's. Many cultures have different dates for celebrating New Year's. You've got the Chinese New Year and in Korea you've got Solal, which is the Korean New Year. They celebrate it at different times according to the lunar calendar. Every country also has their own way of celebrating the New Year. You can let students research a different country and then do a presentation on its New Year's celebration. For example, the Chinese New Year starts February 3rd. And this year will also be the year of the snake. They can look up their own zodiac too. There are so many things that students can research and then also present it to the class. Students love teaching other students these interesting details. Also get students to share their experience with New Year's. Do they do something special? Do they wake up early and see the sunrise? Do they go to bed at late? Do they have special food they eat? There are so many interesting things that they can do and I want you to get them to share it with the class. Remember, it is very important for us to relate the material to the student's own experience. That is what teaching is. Number eight, New Year's questions with a partner. I have put 10 questions for student A and 10 questions for student B down below in the description. It reviews the past year and also looks forward to the year ahead. Number nine, video battle. I don't really use video that much in the classroom unless it's entertaining or it is relevant to the lesson. Down below, I put a link to two videos you can use in the classroom. Younger students can just watch it, but I've got a good idea for more advanced students to have some fun. Play the video twice. Let students write down some of the ideas from the video. And then in a group, they have to make difficult questions for another group. You take the two teams and they ask each other the questions and see which team can get the most right. Remember to walk around and just to check that the questions aren't too difficult and too weird, but you can make it fun. The students pay attention because they really want to win and ask good questions. This is a fantastic game you can play in your class. And last one, number 10, Auld Lang Syne. Teach students the lyrics to Auld Lang Syne and let them sing it in class. What is Auld Lang Syne? It is a song that we sing once the clock strikes 12 and the new year starts. It was written in the 18th century by Robert Burns and it reminds us of the good times that we've spent with friends and helps us look forward to the year ahead. The words Auld Lang Syne translate to the good old days. Here are the lyrics to the song and you can teach it to your class and you can sing it together. 
I was thinking of singing it, but I don't want to torture you. So I'm just going to read it instead. Old Lang Syne by Robert Burns. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all acquaintance be forgot and old Lang Syne? For old Lang Syne, my dear, for old Lang Syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for old Lang Syne. Okay, I don't want to see any mentions in the comments of my bad singing. Nor do I want to see any fake compliments. My poor heart just won't be able to take it. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this with your friends. I'm Eric from Etiquude, wishing you a happy new year.